Welcome to another brand new episode of Snobcast. Welcome. I'm sorry, just when we when we started this, I wanted to count them in like they did on TV. You know, five, oh, yeah, the four, and then you three. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Snobcast. Uh, we got a great episode today. I'm super excited. I think you guys are too. Mm-hmm. It's pretty. I know Tom yeah. could be more excited. I could be more excited. But it's not about the F1. <gasps> so, um, I'm so original. It's only the fourth time we taped this intro. <laughs> 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 um, this is the JFL episode. Yes. Just yeah. for Laughs Festival is coming uh, virtually. <laughs> it's July 27th, 2019. <laughs> 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 it's the, um, the festival, the World Renown Festival is going virtual. Uh, this year for obvious reasons yeah and uh, it's uh, next weekend uh, well actually this weekend so the uh, October 9th and 10th do they still sell like the three gala the three show uh, <laughs> week pass no so that's the fun <clears throat> part the whole festival is free yeah so they're not making any money well I guess they have sponsors oh, yeah, but, it's all the sponsors yeah. but I mean as far as uh, content uh, purposes it's uh, free so they have a schedule up on hahaha.com oh shit and uh, it starts at like 5 p.m. um on the, I believe, the Friday and the Saturday. It's, it kicks off with, like, Judd Apatow and Kevin Hart, co- full-on conversation about oh, comedy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's still uh, still going strong. Wow. Yeah, and then Howard Mandel does uh, uh, another in-conversation thing. Um, but we spoke with two of the acts that will be at the uh, festival, and we'll talk mm. to you about that a bit oh later. Are you guys excited? You guys should be excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm, excited. I'm talking to our listeners. Oh, yeah. Hey, well, listeners. Hype Man Steve is here. Hey, uh, it's me, good? Hype Man Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Tom, who graced us with the uh, apple donuts, oh, homemade. Oh, look, there's, there's, one really more, there's one more butthole on the plate. I'm going to take it. It's definitely Steve's, yeah. yeah. yeah Steve's going to take it. I, I am going to take the it. The hype. They were pretty good. I wish they would have been like warm, obviously. Well, I would also yeah. appreciate if they were warm, but hey, what are you going to do? You but, can't but you, know, you could still appreciate like um, the doughiness you still had in there. It was I thought you were awesome. going to say something poetic. You know the way that you appreciate the Mona Lisa, <laughs> even though you don't need to know about art? <laughs> uh, it was a very good donut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chef Tom, are you doing well? I'm, I'm, I'm doing. I'm a bit broken, but I'm doing well. Yeah, yep, your knees yep. are fucked up. Yeah, I don't know what the hell I did, guys. Mm. I don't know what the hell I did. I've been compensating because I slipped on some ice with one. What ice? When it is, it's fucking falling? Yeah, no, which? like one of those big ice cubes that <laughs> I slipped on <laughs> it in the shed, and that's what threw my knee off. You, did you fall? I no no I didn't like hit the floor but like but the way if anything maneuvered. it's worse because you're like there and you're like oh I have to catch myself but you're all do like a bad movement. My neighbor like, was uh, there. Nelson would have oh Nelson me yeah, he would have he would have hit me with that. some of that some of that oil yeah some of that oil. What well, we discussed last week yeah yeah that Nelson oil. oil? Steve knows about uh, catching himself in the moment where it's like unexpected. Oh yeah. Yeah, because I feel like he almost he caught a cactus once or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a story there, huh? Yeah, that was... Um, <laughs> Which could have been brought up on your uncomfortable moment. Uh, well, it was actually... Because <laughs> well, it's more uncomfortable than that argument that happened between the time <laughs> the cactus fell and, you, and the uh, the time you were heroic. Oh, well, the funny thing you mentioned between the time, though, I, like that whole cactus situation happened in slow motion i'm not even like kidding or anything wow it was, it was all like wanted and all the spines yeah. like went into your oh well, okay, okay i'll just say the story at this i point. guess at this point we, okay. we, we got two guests but i guess hey oh. let's, let's go for it i guess uh, well go for your story steve so i'm uh, like 15 16 uh, i'm in my friend's basement and i was like i don't know what the fuck i was doing but uh, I, was, I was being an idiot i was being an idiot. I was just doing like, the worm you know <laughs> i'd like, I'd like to think that steve's doing the worm yeah and on the window st- on the windowsill, there's a, a potted cactus. Mm-hmm. So somehow I knock it with my hand. Okay, so it starts to fall now. As soon as it starts falling, uh, and not to exaggerate or whatever, everything like slowed down. It was like slow motion. I was watching it go down, and I'm debating with myself. So I'm like, "Well, I can't catch a cactus. It's you know, it's a fucking cactus. It has needles mm. and shit." So I was like, "Well, I can't do that." And then you know, it's going lower. It's going down. And then I'm like, but I feel like, you know, falls and like breaks and it's like, you know, earth. And, it was your fault? Was and it shit your fault? Everywhere. I'm like, it's, it's like, it's my fault. I was like doing nonsense. A so poor I was cactus. Like, didn't so do I was anything. Like, so I was like, fuck. Okay. I can't, I can't not catch it. So it's I was like. your friend's mom's cactus. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm like, okay, I have to do it. So again, all, all in slow motion, I go, I put my hand under. It falls into my hand. Time resumes. 
I'm like, okay, so far so good. I put the cactus back where it was. But when I let go, all the needles stayed in my hand. Oh, no. I had to pull them all out. Did one by, uh, most, well, it was like whatever. It was like it was, pinchy. Yeah. Oh, and just... then, but the, the real problem was like, I couldn't get like two or three out. So I had to wait a few days for them to like. What? Yeah. What do you mean you have to wait a few days? Well, so, okay. I, I like pulled everything out How after do you a wait? while. What do you do? And like, then, well, I just had to wait until my like body pushed them out. Like, like a splinter. Because they were too, uh, they were too far in for me to be able to grab. Oh, them. they were like they were small. It wasn't like you yeah. had like a two inch like spine sticking. Oh out no no no! That it was too small for me. <laughs> Holy to grab. Holy shit! I was like, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> no, that was, that was the rest of my hand. They want to go to bed now. They were like out to uh, here. Oh out fuck. To, my uh, hand was covered. I had to pull them wow, off. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and that's Hype Man Steve, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Catching his friend's mom's cactus. Was she grateful to you forever? I didn't tell her. But my friends were there. They saw me do it. So, I so, guess the, the, so you're, you're like stoic almost. I would say I'm pretty stoic. Wow. Stoic. <laughs> yeah. That's a good word, right? That's a good no, word. I don't know if it's, you know, yeah. if it really works in this context. But I like, I like it as a word and a, whenever I hear a that vibe. Word. So I'm going to still go with yeah, I was, whenever I was I, pretty stoic. Whenever I hear that word, I kind of think of stoico. Remember Elvis, oh, Elvis stoico. stoico. Elvis stoico. Great guy. Yeah. I assume. But it's Elvis Where stoico. Come on. Uh oh, I don't know. He's probably like just forget it. I, forget it. I think he's he said he probably hangs out with the scars guards. <laughs> <laughs> but which ones? Oh, fucking probably Bill. <laughs> Super great show today. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and um, and I mean, uh, who else then like to welcome right now mm. as our very very special guest, the one and only. Steve Byrne, who's an actor, oh, I director. <laughs> I imagine that. I would have cued him in with that. <laughs> uh, actor, director, comedian, fucking screenwriter. Uh, all he has a all around funny guy. Yeah, he has a new film coming out called The Opening Act. It's being released on October 16th. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Steve Byrne. We're here with our very special guest today, Steve Byrne, comedian, writer, director. He has a brand new film coming out called The Opening Act. Super excited to see that. Steve, how are you doing? Wonderful. You're the nicest snob I've ever met, so this is great. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. People, people get scared with the name, but, you know, I'm a pretty nice guy. <laughs> okay, cool. I love it. <laughs> um, the opening act. You know what's really awesome about this is that I've been following you on Instagram uh, since I saw you at JFL a few years ago at the Ethnic Show. Oh, wow, thanks. Uh, yeah. I'm a huge fan. Uh, you were my favorite out of that whole lineup. Uh, don't tell anyone else. And, um, <laughs> and I've, been see- I've been following your progress with this film, so I'm super psyched to see it. And I'm very happy it's- it got greenlit and that we'll finally be able to see it in a few weeks. And, like, um, how was that whole experience for you? I mean, you're writing, you're directing. Yeah, uh, it was, um, look, it was overwhelming, but at the same time, it's extremely exciting. It's completely new territory for me. Um, but, you know, as with anything, I, I remember when, when the, like you said, the film got greenlit. Yeah. Um, Vince Vaughn, who produced it and is a good friend, said, okay, well, we're going to make this. Do you want to be in it? And I said, well, I'm too... I'm too old to be the MC and feature, and I'm too young to be like an established looking headliner. So I said, you know, I'm just happy it's it's being made, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, why don't you direct it? I said, yeah, I'll direct it. Never like thinking in a million years how much responsibility and everything (laughs) that goes along with it. So I read all the books I could, everything from, you know, just master classes on, you know, with Werner Herzog and Ron Howard, Martin Scorsese and, Mm -hmm. And reading books uh, about Eli Kazan and then even like directing for dummies and nothing can still prepare you for the overwhelming <laughs> responsibility of directing a film. It was, it was, it was great, but it was, it was crazy. That's insane. So this is your first feature film. Yeah. I had, I had yeah. directed a, a, a documentary about the okay. Mason Jonathan, but for sure oh, yes. it's my first feature film. They're very different. Yeah. Okay, cool. And I mean, so I mean, you had a lot of support from like, you know, uh, friends of yours who are also who are also comics. And I mean, h- how was it for you to, you know, get that kind of like support from your peers? Like, was that inspiring for you? That is that what kept you going? Yeah, look, I mean, when you're when you're getting ready to cast this thing, and the casting director can almost kind of like, say, okay, well, 
I guess you're you're just gonna cast this on your own. I mean, <laughs> I felt bad because Julie Ashton and I, she she's a phenomenal casting director, but with all the roles, I I knew certain comics that would be perfect for those roles. So mm-hmm. it was literally just a matter of calling them up and saying, hey, would you mind coming down for a day in Los Angeles and doing this film? And I, I'd say 90% of them, without them even seeing the script, were like, yeah, let's do it. It'll be fun. And I think Russell Peters was the first one I called. And once he said, yeah, it gave me a lot more confidence to call Tom Segura and Bill Burr and mm-hmm. Whitney Cummings yeah. and Ken Jeong, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. 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 Russell is such a nice guy, right? Like, uh, I've interviewed yeah. him a few times. Like, and he, all, and he remembers you, which is really messed up. Like, this guy's seen so many people and, like, talked to so many people, and he's, like, so down to earth and uh, an amazing guy. He needs to run for office. Yeah. Yeah. He does. <laughs> And he's one of those guys where he's so nice. It's it's almost like, do I owe you money? But then you realize he doesn't need any money. He's no, got he all the money in the world. He's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I mean, you got this incredible cast, Jimmy O Yang, who's hilarious. Um, he's like pretty much the lead in the film. Is that correct? Yeah, Jimmy's the lead. He plays kind of like a semi autobiographical version of me because basically, once Jimmy hits the road, or mm. will I should say, his character. Um, everything that happens once he's on the road has happened to me. So people are going to see this film and go, there's no way that happened. It's like, no, it happened. And I can tell you what city it happened in. Um, so everything from radio to going out after night, nothing good happens after midnight. Yeah, all those things did happen to me. And, you know, the great thing about Jimmy is that he was a comic and he's a phenomenal actor. So mm-hmm. I didn't have to hire an actor and train them for a few months to get familiar with looking like they're a stand-up comedian. It was yeah. it was a godsend. And the fact that Jimmy, you know, was also Asian <laughs> kind yeah. of helps. But we never make that a thing. It, it, it's not even it's not even part of the film. It's just he's a comedian that happens to be Asian, and I'm a mm-hmm. writer-director and comedian that happens to be Asian. So we never yeah. made a thing out of it either. That's great. And, I mean, um, the rest of the cast also, I mean, you got Cedric the Entertainer, who's, who's like, you know, like a – Sorry, like a fucking legend, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. And and Roy Wood Jr. and uh, is, is, is it pronounced Angela Johnson? That that's how I said it, right? Uh, Angela Johnson. Uh, have, yeah. yeah. Look, they're all like yeah. like all of these acts that you're mentioning, or usually on the poster or, or in the credits. They're all yeah. incredibly t- phenomenal comics, and and some of them, I, I'd say, twenty percent of them are club comics, and the rest of them are theater or arena acts. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they all agreed to come by and do it. And Cedric was Cedric was a, an absolute blessing. Um, he's so grounded. And he you'll see there's a dichotomy in his performance. Yeah. And I don't want to give anything away, but he really just did a great job threading that needle. And the chemistry be, between him and Jimmy was real because I didn't realize this, but when Cedric was on set the very first day, Jimmy said, your entrance song in the Kings of Comedy was my entrance song when I first started com- comedy because I, I thought you were so awesome. And it was like, oh, that's, that's even better. You know? <laughs> that's insane. So, I mean, um, yeah. it, with all the crap that's going on in the world, uh, I so what's going on virtually. And, I mean, uh, you're, you're moderating uh, what's called Breaking In, which you'll be moderating the cast of your film, like the people that I mentioned earlier, um, what can we what can we expect uh, on that virtual uh, you know experience? Well, I think the, the the fun thing about the film is that this is not a comic going out on the last time. This is not a comic who's you know who's established. The film is about a kid's very first time ever hitting the road and all those crazy experiences that go along with it. And it's funny because as cast members have slowly seen the film individually they um they keep telling me things like like when tom segura said it so he said i got to call my therapist again because you re-triggered all these horrible memories that i had (laughs) that i thought i was over with so i think it's going to be all of us collectively revisiting those painful but romantic years that we experienced as comedians all right that's great, and I can't wait to see this virtual uh, experience, and it'll be kind of cool. And um, so, I mean, you, this is like you said, your first feature film. Um, now that you have, do you, did you get a bug? Do you want to do something else now, like another movie? Uh, yeah, I, I like. I you know, I always thought when I moved to Los Angeles, you want to be on the poster, right? Mm-hmm. But the more I got involved in the writing process on Sullivan and Son, 
Yeah. And, you know, especially doing the documentary on Jonathan, being the conduit of the story is an immense responsibility. And I really, really did enjoy it. And the opening act is so personal. I, after Vince had suggested to me, I, I just thank God that he, he did, because again, the story is personal. And I felt, you know, look, this is the first thing I told the cast and crew. I said, before we, before we called action on the very first take, the very first day, I said, it is my first time directing. I don't know everything about a camera, about production design or lighting, but I know everything about this script. I know mm-hmm. everything about this story. And I feel that that's paramount. So I'm going to lean on you a little more heavily, but please lean on me when it comes to the story. And I oh. think that bought me a lot of credit on, on the set, but I really meant it. Like the story, the story means everything to me. And I think we finally, finally, finally put that in bold, finally have a great film about stand-up comedy. Oh, my God. You're giving me goosebumps, dude. I cannot wait to see this film. <laughs> uh, what's the actual release date? When is it being released? Uh, it, will be, it will be released um, Friday, October 16th in theaters and VOD. Oh, my God. I can't wait. And, I mean, before I let you go, i got to mention something. Uh, you and I are both huge Oasis fans. What do we do? Oh, yeah. What do we do to get these brothers to, you know, get back on stage together? I don't want them together. I'm one of the. You don't? I don't. It was a moment in time. Okay. We'll never get it back. But what we have are the tunes. The tunes are, are, yeah. are, are, are what's most important. Whether they come back again or whether they don't, we can still. You and I could go get a bottle of whiskey, <laughs> get 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 pre-gamed at your at your place, and then go hit the bars that night, blasting <laughs> cigarettes and alcohol, supersonic. Getting to the bar, throwing twenty in the jukebox, and playing Wonderwall, and don't look back in anger, and getting everybody to sing at their top of the lungs. That's what Oasis is, I think. It's it's that spirit of optimism, of youth, and anything after "Be Here Now" was okay, but those first three, ooh, you can't top them. How about you, uh, dude? I don't even know that. Uh, like, I guess I agree with you 100 uh, percent because, uh, yeah, for sure. Now we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of uh, what's the story, Morning Glory, which is probably Morning Glory, you know, yeah, hell yeah, which is probably the best album of the 90s and uh and i mean yeah i, I agree with you I, I, anything after be here now is whatever lucky luckily enough i was able to see them oasis together in 2008 um before they broke up so i mean uh but, but I, mean, I, I love them individually as well like i love listening to noel and i love you know i love liam stuff and uh but yeah i guess the tunes is what we got and we got to just live with that and uh i'm i'm okay with pre-gaming with some whiskey so let's do that then yeah, I, I love it. And I'll tell you, I, I went to, I've seen them probably five or six times. Wow. I met them on a flight going from L.A. to Vegas. I flew wow. from New York and my labor was in L.A. And they were on the same flight. And I got pictures with each of them. Noel was kind of a, a cunt. And yeah. Liam was was the coolest. The coolest. Really? Talked to me for 10 minutes about stand-up comedy. He was the best. And then saw him that night at the Hard Rock. And being fans of Oasis and the Killers... Yeah. I had come to learn in an article that Brandon Flowers snuck into the end of that concert, saw Oasis on stage and said, that's it. That's what I'm doing. So the Killers and Oasis both uh, both happen there. I got to jump on this next call. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. That, next interview. But Thank you so I much to Steve Byrne. So and we'll uh, we'll talk soon. Good luck with I'm the movie. The to opening. JFL. Let's do oh, it. Yeah, we'll get some uh, we'll get some Jameson and uh, and do it up. All right. Uh, cheers, man. Thank you so much. Cheers, pal. Bye. Bye. Uh, Steve Byrne, that is gentlemen. That, now that that's a guy I would have a Jameson with. I Listen. don't know why I was going into it thinking it was Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I do the interviews. <laughs> <laughs> Hi Gilbert. Hi, how are you? <laughs> not fucking. But no, is that so awesome? So him and I are both like huge Oasis fans, as as you just heard. So and you guys found each other, the only f- two fans. Yeah, we found each other. Aww. But he, but he, uh, like he said, doesn't want to get back together. He just loves them solo, and yeah. so, which I agree. Like they're good. You know, Who's solo. better? I don't, well, so Steve, so so Steve Burns said that Noel was a cunt, uh, and Liam was chill apparently. But I mean, I like Noel because I like his music better, his solo music better which than, than Noel? Liam, uh, the other brother, not the one the singing guitarist. with the, ga- with the, the glasses. Guitarist. No, that's Liam. No, that's Liam. Oh, um, I like Noel. But he's a but he's an asshole. Who's the one that likes uh, Chelsea? Or is Man it Chelsea City. Man City? Who They're all it? Manchester. They're both. Oh. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, Steve, I think so. I know Noel talks the most, uh, like yeah. more about Man yeah. City. I I think uh, Liam's also a Man City fan. Yeah, but we should definitely Steve Byrne. 
He's going to hit us up when he comes to yeah, Montreal. And we have some yeah. Jameson with him. Oh, yeah. oh my God. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. Meet yeah. you at the Hilton. Oh, it's true. It's the Hilton now. Fuck. Oh, get that fucking two for one. Uh, we'll get that, talk about we'll that. Get that gin picture. We have no. so many great <laughs> JFL moments. Oh, I, well, I, it's predecessors. So. I feel like 70% of them were drunk. <laughs> oh, 100%. <laughs> Drunk or just hyperventilating because you don't know who's going to walk into the room next. And then when they do, you're like, (gasps) like, remember that time we went to that party on the route on the terrace on the terrace outside? Yeah. And out of nowhere, John Mayer, Dave Chappelle. Oh, that you know what? This this waltz in that night. The crowd was packed. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. John Mayer's there. Which, by the way, Dave Chappelle left John Mayer in the crowd while Dave Chappelle went off in like a corner. Yeah. And John Mayer apparently hates that. He hates like crowds and stuff. Yeah, uh, oh. and you could see he was uncomfortable. Well, yeah, because he got because there were probably like, there were probably girls just going up next to him. And imagine like John Mayer just, excuse me, sorry, and someone's excuse like, me. Yeah, I want to yeah, smell his dick. <laughs> your body's a wonderland. Yeah, yeah that's, that's me. Yeah, <laughs> just want to get to the bathroom. Dave, Dave, <laughs> and Dave's in a corner like. You know, <laughs> like I'm just smoking his shit. Oddly enough, I don't know if you guys remember, but I took a, sn- I, I, you know, I didn't. We, we've said our fair shares of hello to, you know, comics yeah. and actors yeah. in in that. Sense. But you know, when there's a certain caliber, oh. you don't you don't do it like unless, yeah. unless they're yeah. world class. Yeah, and I mean, they were with their like posse of people. Yeah, you don't go up to them and be like, yeah, dude, huge fan, can we take a picture? You just you just you bask in the moment of like. Okay, you're in the same room, living at the same time as Dave Chappelle and John Mayer. Yeah, yeah and he's inhaling right their fucking yeah. particles with no corona. That that, and what do I do? I pull out my phone and I start filming a Snapchat at the time. Yeah. Okay, which is still a thing, but I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't use it anymore. I like Snapchat. I like the filters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so I I pull out my phone and I start filming and I'm like doing like a selfie thing. And behind me is Dave Chappelle, like literally, like maybe yeah. like fifteen feet. Yeah, on those steps. On those steps. Yes. Uh, at the on the terrace of the hotel. Yes. And I'm like, what a moment! And I just was. all I said in the snap was like, "Holy shit!" Dave were we Ch- all there? Uh, yes. Yeah, the we were you were there. there. I yes. was there. Yeah. yeah. You guys you had were. gone to the show. Yeah, but that and was then, the day after. Yeah, yeah, yeah they were there the day before. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so so I I pull out my phone and I, I start taking a video. I'm like, "Holy shit!" Dave Chappelle's behind me. Doesn't Dave Chappelle look to the camera and just point? Just points yeah. to the fucking my my phone. I'm like, no way, dude. Yeah. Like this can only happen at JFL. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I mean, it didn't last long because then literally John Mayer was like super uncomfortable and like Dave Chappelle was like, okay, we're gonna leave now. Yeah. Oh. And then Steve uh, saw something happen to like one of the people at the party. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> okay. So Dave Dave Chappelle's leaving now. We're so, outside still. So okay. yeah. Dave, I was, was I don't remember this. You were really high. Drunk. I was high. I smoked. Had just smoked a huge cannon with Dave Merhej. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have Shout anything out. on him. Shout out to Dave Mahesh. <laughs> I rolled him a nice blue dream, and we got fucking way out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, Dave was with like uh, a people, crew. I think yeah. I think uh, they were security. Okay, as big you know, big jacked guys. So he's walking through the crowd now. He's leaving. He's gonna leave with uh, John Mayer. So he's going. So. I'm there. He's pa- he's passing by. I'm like, well, fuck, you <laughs> okay, know? So how fucked up is it that we're talking Dave, about this right now? Because we were there. Yeah, like D- yeah. D- Dave Chappelle's just passing in front of me. I'm like, wow, this is L- like literally nuts. like shoulders. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, right, yeah. He's right, right in front of me. <laughs> Did you so, not combust? So this one <laughs> fucking loser. Okay, he comes up. Okay, so he a random. Yeah, a random. Okay. okay, he has his phone. He gets next to Dave. Puts in like like he's ready to take a selfie. He's like, hey Dave, you mind uh, taking a picture? And Dave's like, not right now. No, he's like, no thanks, man. Okay, oh. and he keeps walking. Now the guy. Okay, so and I just oh. want to point. Dave had uh, three uh, security guys with him. They were so they were big guys. Though, right? Yeah, they were these are big guys. Bigger than Dave Chappelle. Yeah, and Dave. Okay, by so the Dave's way, not a small guy. Everyone, Dave, Dave everyone, was a small guy. Now yeah. I don't know what the fuck he's happened. Beef. Everyone who's listening, yeah. Dave Chappelle is fucking jacked. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's fucking he's jacked. He's massive. <laughs> Holy fuck! Anyway, so he's like Kevin Hart, but a normal size. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 that's a, that's a good one. <laughs> and longer arms. Yeah. <laughs> and the longer arms. So scratches so kneecaps Dave while says, he's stretching. <laughs> Dave says no thanks and keeps walking, okay? So yeah. this this fucking idiot uh-huh. gets offended because he's so fucking special and he's like he says, Oh fucking asshole. No. Okay. Steve heard this. <laughs> I heard this, okay? <laughs> so security guard number one. They were like in a they were like in a line with Dave at the front, okay? So security guard number one hears him. 
And as he's walking, fucking just with his shoulder, just fucking gives him a fucking shove. Right? No. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this guy was fucking pissed at that. So he goes, calls him a fucking asshole. No. So he's saying this. The second security guard's passing. The guy turns to him and he looked like he had he the had security the, guard. The security guard. He had, he had the face of a guy who who's, who's torn prob- people's souls out from their bodies. He's like probably committed murder. He's just fucking. He turns. He fucking looks at him like he's gonna bite the fuck out of his head. Okay, he's just gonna bite his fucking head off. And security guard three just like keeps walking, grabs him, and like like no, we have to keep going. Like that guy almost died that night. He didn't even fucking know it. This is the only kind of moment that could happen for Steve. And Steve would be. Like, <laughs> I was just there, like this guy's fucking dead. Dave security's gonna fucking kill him. He's dead. I, th- I thought you only saw stuff like this in the streets of Eastern Istanbul. <laughs> but it's messed up because literally, like, we had a bit to drink that night already. A bit, and, and, and no, but at that point, and then Steve comes to me. He goes, I, "You don't know what I just saw." Like, and then he told me the story. I was like, "That's nuts." And then out of nowhere, literally, it's it, it's like a fucking. Like fairy tale out of David and John, oh. they were gone. Yeah, gone. Yeah, they're, then they left. I remember that night. Yeah. I remember that night because I remember I took an Uber home yes, after that. We all did. No, I left earlier. Yes, you left earlier because left, that's what you do. I left earlier. <laughs> no, I left earlier because I remember I had something to do in the morning. And I remember when I got in the Uber. You were so fucked up. <laughs> when I got in the Uber, I fell asleep. <laughs> and when I woke up when I got home the guy was yelling at me and I woke up and I didn't remember what happened <laughs> so, so I look at him and I'm, I push him and I'm like fuck you what are you doing in my car <laughs> I thought he was robbing me <laughs> tell us the story <laughs> what the fuck oh, what <laughs> yeah and then I'm looking at him and he's, I'm like oh wait I'm like I'm in front of my house I'm like oh wait I'm sorry I was I fell asleep he's like, it's okay it's okay don't worry about it. <laughs> Like it hadn't happened to him. Five stars. It was yeah, five yeah. stars. Yeah. It wasn't the first yeah. time I tipped him like ten bucks. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Let's not ever talk about that again. Comment. Sir. So, sorry, I yelled at you. <laughs> Thought was being robbed. <laughs> oh god! But there's so many. Like what? Like that's one of the many stories. And before we get into the rest of those stories, we're uh, gonna welcome our next guest, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god! He is a JFL veteran, JFL alumni. Oh I guess you god. could say uh, the hilarious. My good friend Alonzo Bowden. All right, we're here with our very special guest, Alonzo Bowden, who will be at the uh, JFL Just for Last Festival um, next weekend, and uh, it's virtual this year, so I mean it's a little different. But Alonzo, like you're, you're a veteran of this festival, and they are having you back again. Well, I love coming back. I mean, being a veteran, everything's different now because it's virtual. Yeah, you know, so it, it's kind of this is this one's new territory for all of us. Yeah, and I mean, you're taking part of the Just for Laughs Eat My Shorts segment. Uh, tell us a bit about what you'll be doing for that because that's the whole like short film festival, right? Yeah, and this is a first for me. This is the first time I'm involved with the uh, short films and judging the films, and and I will be the first to say. I am not qualified in the sense that I'm not a filmmaker. So I love all of them, like the work they did. And, and it's very it's very funny to me and very creative how some of them, it's like that in five minutes you did a whole movie. Like yeah. you told the story and it was funny and, and the whole thing just that quick. So uh, I absolutely loved all of them. It was hard to pick. I'll tell you one thing. And there's a category that we have to judge on called the, the technical, uh, basically technically how the movie's put together. I just gave everyone a top score because it's like, look, I can't point a camera on an iPhone. So you yeah. did fantastic, <laughs> in my opinion. But really funny films, and they're all different. You know, yeah. that was that was cool, too. Um, and it was fun to be a part of that. It was definitely fun to be a part of it. So... Th- and and that's a part where in the virtual festival, you know, you can just watch the films yourself, which is really cool. Like you don't 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 take our word for it; just watch them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And I mean, um, so I mean, so and you're announcing the winner. Is it live that night? Uh, no, we will okay. again. We have to do everything. I guess it's because of timing, and okay. also the other reason they're doing everything virtual is so you can watch it when you want to. So, okay. so if you're if you're going to the digital festival, right, and you yeah. say it's 
I don't know, Saturday afternoon, mm -hmm. you might be, hey, I want to watch the Kevin Hart, Judd Apatow interview, yeah. and then I want to watch three movies, and then I want to watch so-and-so do stand-up, and then I want to watch the winners of the movie. You know what I mean? So okay. You can, you can bounce around and watch what you want to watch on demand through the entire weekend. That's pretty cool to think about. It. I mean, like you said, it's new territory for everyone. It's like it, it is new territory for you guys as comics, but also new territory uh, for like viewers to be like, "Holy shit, I could just spend the entire day in my boxers watching JFL." Yeah, and and in the order you want. I mean, one thing, one <laughs> nice thing about the virtual festival versus the real festival, you don't have to worry about traffic. No, at all, know? especially in Montreal. When you're at the real festival, you're like. Uh oh, this show ends at nine o'clock, and that show starts at nine fifteen. But I can't make it from point A to point B because I got to get through the street festival, and I got to park, and you know, get an Uber. Yeah. Well, now you don't. You just click. There's no excuses. No excuses whatsoever. <laughs> um, and how you been coping? I mean, this is an interesting time. Uh, we don't want to mention the c word, you know, uh, but it's an interesting time. I mean. Uh, how is it going in the states? I mean, are you able to travel now and do like some shows around the states? Or let me tell you how bad we're doing here in the states. The murder hornets left. Ah. Right? Does that tell you? <laughs> that tell you how bad things got. Even the murder hornets were like, we we can't work with you people. You people are insane. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's crazy. It's, well, it's very it's very odd because, like you said, the various states have different rules. So okay. And you're August, in L.A. I got i I'm in L.A. Okay. Where they're not allowing any live shows. Okay. Um, in August, I went to Tampa, Florida. We did, a, you know, the club had its social distancing. Mm -hmm. We did the shows, uh, and you know, Florida isn't shutting down anything, right? <laughs> Ever. And then you had. I was in St. Louis, same thing. We did the shows, but they, they limited capacity, et cetera, et cetera. Then, mm -hmm. because some things have spiked, some shows I had scheduled in September and October have now been canceled. Right. You know? So now I'm doing more. It's more back to virtual and Zoom. Okay. And uh, some stuff is scheduled for late later this month. And hopefully it'll go. But honestly, the, the craziest thing about now is you don't know. So you just plan mm -hmm. and wait and see. That's the best we can do, right? You just plan something yeah. and you wait and see. I mean, thankfully, airlines are refunding the money because you buy a plane ticket and you're like, well, I might be going and I might not be going. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, that's for that. I mean, yeah, it's good that they're refunding tickets. I mean, so, so I mean, you guys are flying to different shows. How has it been the, the shows you have been able to travel to? Like, how is how is the whole airport aspect of travel? Is it weird? Is it just fucking weird? And I'll you know. tell you the weirdest thing. And this is now I'm I'm a road warrior, right? I yes. fly over a hundred thousand miles a year. I'm in the airport every week. Yeah. So when I it, I went four months without going to the airport without flying, which is really weird. Mm -hmm. The people are pretty safe. That's pretty cool. Like I haven't run into any of the mass crazies or any of that. But what's strange is the airport is empty and it's closed. That's you nice. know, they there'll be like instead of twenty places to eat, there'll be three. And wow. the retail stores are closed and so that part is kind of weird. Um different airlines are handling it different ways. Yeah. So, like, when I was on American Airlines, you know, you got to wear your mask and, yeah. and this and that. But then, like, Delta Airlines, nobody sits next to you. Everyone has an empty seat next okay. to them. Um, which, which isn't and, horrible. And, again, they yeah. – no, no, yeah. not horrible at all. It, yeah. It's our dream. Yeah. Right? But they're doing the, – you know why they're doing a good job? Because if there's an outbreak on aircraft – yeah. They're gonna, that'll destroy their business. I mean, they're already losing, you know, billions a ton of, of money, dollars. Yeah. The worst thing that can happen is people get sick on a plane and then no one flies. So I think yeah. they're doing the best they can to keep it clean. And I, I'll tell you, just to be on stage in front of people, and I've done some of these shows where it's only 20 or 30 people, but even that, 
man, it is like drinking water after you've been in the desert, you know, just to have a live yeah. response. It, it, this is my best description of it. It's like the difference between playing Grand Theft Audio uh, on a video game yeah. or actually stealing a car and running from the police. Oh uh, a <laughs> little more energy in the second one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it must be uh, shit. Like you know, the 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 socially distant shows and the you know minimal capacity venues. I mean, it's tough. And I mean, like you said, you're in LA, and they're still not allowing live shows. Any, not even like outdoor shows at all. Like nothing. There have been some outdoor shows, but they're more. They're just outside of LA. Like you go to Orange okay. County, or I went down to Escondido, which is near San Diego, yeah. and did a drive-in show. And okay. um, there was a beach club having shows outside on the beach. So it's just a matter of being creative. Yeah, that's how yeah. that's how we do it. You just have to be creative. But they can't. Like the Comedy Store, I think wanted to do shows in their parking lot, and they were like, "No, you can't do that." Wow. So yeah, it, there's a, there's a creative element to it, and and, and I mean, it work. so this time for you is it a reflective period for you? Are you writing new material? Because like you you just uh, I think early like late last year you released uh, Heavy Lightweights, which was your Amazon uh, special. Um, are you writing new material? Like what's what's this whole thing been like for you? Well, obviously I'm writing because we're in such new territory. I mean, we're yeah. dealing with you know. Nobody nobody knew anything about social distancing. Nobody mm-hmm. knew what that term meant. Nobody knew what a Zoom meeting was. Yeah. You know, nobody so so you I have to write about that, but the weird thing is there's nowhere to run the set, right? So normally yeah. I write new stuff, I'll go to the laugh factory, I go to the improv, I'll do ten, fifteen minutes, I get to work some new jokes. Well that doesn't that's gone. So yeah. when you write something new, like, where am I going to test this? Well, I'm going to test it the next time I do a Zoom meeting. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to test it on a podcast. You know, uh, yeah. a friend of mine, Liz Neely, has a, a uh, Facebook Live show she does that's just three comics doing new material for each other. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? And, 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 like, and yeah. We, we're, and, you know, because, again, we don't have the clubs where we normally would try new material and just work stuff out. That yeah. doesn't uh, that doesn't really exist anymore. For yeah, a while. it's nuts. Yeah, for a while. I mean, it's nuts. Like so, like you're saying you used to go to clubs to like test your let's say your new hour or more or less like jokes from a new hour you'd like to put together, and now it's just you know out you know up in the air. And hopefully by the time this thing is over, all the jokes that you wrote kill. So I mean, you could just be like, yeah. I'm ready for my new special, you know? So. Well, it's a lot of faith, right? Yeah. It's, that's yeah. what it is. It's a lot of faith. Like, yeah, well, I was funny before this started. I think I'm still <laughs> funny. But I'm going to tell you, there was a period about early July. Mm-hmm. I hadn't been on stage from March 14th wow. to July 3rd. Wow. And when I knew I had the July 3rd, and it was just a 10-minute thing, on July 1st, I was like, Am I still funny? Yeah. Like you, you just you don't you question do yourself. it so yeah. long. You question yourself, you know. And I was like, I wish I had the confidence of a bad comic. Oddly, bad comics are the most confident people in the world. Which they're is weird. They're convinced it's you. They're yeah. convinced it's you and not them. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I want that confidence. So I so so what you're saying essentially is that even like see right before that show, where, whereas let's say you wouldn't be nervous before any other show previously before March, now you were you were scared shitless and you were like fuck, can I even do this? Like you question yourself and that's it. Well, all right, I don't know if I go as far as scared shitless. Okay, slow down a little. I'm slow. I'm slow. No, I'm slow. I um, <laughs> I did a show in Huntington Beach, which is down in Orange yeah. County, and it was outdoor beach club show. And a friend of mine who came to the show, she said, I saw something I've never seen before. She said, you were nervous. And it was like, yeah, I was. You know, yeah. at the beginning of the show, I was nervous because I hadn't done it in so long. And it was, yeah. I'm thinking to myself, like, am I even going to remember my joke? You know what I mean? Yeah. It was, yeah. So, so there was that. Now, now I just look forward to any opportunity to be in front of people. 
Oh, for sure. And I mean, it, it may, it's more of like you're grateful for what you do, right? So you, you just, you can't wait to get back on stage and just, you know, make people laugh and just run your material. I mean, I, I can't like think of, it's, it's a crazy time. I mean, um, I know without the festival this year, phys- the physical festival, I guess we can call it, uh, it's, it's just a weird time, even for Montreal. It's a weird, it's a weird, no festivals. Like we, we thrive on our summers, right? So now we're just waiting for fucking winter to show up. So <laughs> yeah, I, I can't even imagine what you guys summer was like because i've been there like i've been there for grand prix yeah and for the festival and i know for the whole summer that downtown area is just okay we're gonna have this party this week and then we're gonna do that party next week yeah you know you guys have jazz festivals and and everything going on yeah it must have been really quiet yeah it, it was a weird summer i can tell you for a fact that there's more construction than there's ever been so <laughs> so you're not missing much, you know. Well, I know in LA the weirdest thing was no traffic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That <laughs> you're like what the hell is going on? Everybody and and then the freeways turned into race race tracks. I mean, people <laughs> started driving like they were insane because Suddenly there was no traffic, and the, and the Camry next to you is doing 110 miles an hour. Jeez. And you're like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> um, Alonzo, uh, it's it's not the first time we speak, so I'm, I'm always grateful to speak to you, and it's always a good time. So, I mean, just for laughs, eat my shorts. The virtual fest is uh, – you'll be there October 9th, so here at 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. So, um, I mean, looking forward to seeing you. I guess on a computer screen or a smart TV or something. I mean, uh, we we need our fix of Alonzo Bowden here in Montreal. Like, come on, you've been coming here Man. every every year for fucking ever. Well, when this started, I asked if I could come in, but but Justin said no. Justin yeah. said we're sorry. <laughs> uh, you guys don't know how to behave, so we're closed. So I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't get in under the wire. But no, the festival, the virtual festival. I think the greatest thing about it for all the fans is. Everything is on demand for free all weekend. So you Which can is bounce nuts. around. Yeah. You can watch this. You can watch that. You can watch, you know, people. You can watch the films. And I think that's what's going to make it so much so much fun and just such a cool event. Yeah. So we're looking forward to that. And, uh, I mean, I, I guess we thank the festival for allowing you back uh, to the fest. I mean, come on. What's a, what's a JFL fest without you? Let's be honest. Well, thank you, thank you, yeah. and I'll tell you this is how this is how your fans can thank us. Yeah. And this is something they're doing that's really cool. I don't know if you're aware of this. The, 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 the donation thing, yeah. It has it right. Every show yeah. has a charity attached. Mm-hmm. So if you like the show, or if you didn't like the show, send a couple of bucks to the charity. Help them out. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, yeah. I think that's a really cool thing to do. And and it'll help, and it'll raise a lot of money for a lot of different charities. So I think that's pretty cool. That's so pretty yeah, cool. Send a couple of bucks. Come yeah, on, why not? Canadian money. It's exactly. Canadian money. It's not even real money. So send exactly. Money. <laughs> yeah, I have right here the Eat My Shorts uh, wants the spotlight. <laughs> the the um, the charity attached with the, the Eat My Shorts is the True North Eight. So I mean, True North, strong and free. Let's do this. Get some bucks to those people on the October ninth show. Alonzo, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you, brother. Stay safe, and Thank man, you. I hope we see each other next summer. Yes, let's do that. Let's pray. Let's do this, man. Uh, be safe as well, and we'll talk soon. Uh, Steve, I know you love Alonzo because last year, <laughs> first of all, Alonzo's hilarious. Yes, he is. He's been to the festival since like 97. I think he's come like every year. Yeah. When did it start? JFL? Yeah. Uh, like the 80s, but the French side. Then oh. it transitioned to English. Okay. Uh, and now it's the first ever time uh, that they do French and English comedy together. Okay. Uh, during the festival. It used to just be like 10 days and 10 days. Now it's 20 days combined. That's good, I find. Yeah, yeah. I like that. It's awesome. Uh, but but last year, uh, like, you know, we have some great uh, friends from Toronto who hook us up, especially yeah. with like interviews like we had today with Steve Byrne and Alonzo. Um, but Charlene... And, and Liana, shout out uh, from C two C Communications. Um, they were like, "Hey, uh, why don't you?" Uh, so we, Steve and I were at the were at the hotel where everyone stays, which we'll you know we'll yeah. n- name it nameless. 
And uh, oh wow, the name of this hotel I've been there. The name of this hotel, which we yeah. have been, it's a great place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, strong drinks. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. But uh, we're at the hotel, like at late, like a bit, like later in the evening. Charlene is just hanging around, and she's like, "Hey, um, the red carpet's in a few days." I'm like, "Yeah, okay." She's like, "Well, you should come." I'm like, "Me?" She goes, "Yeah." I'm like, "Can I bring him?" Which was Steve <laughs> next to me. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, yeah, because you, if you want to film, you can have two people. I'm like. <laughs> okay, because <laughs> <'cause laughs> in, 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 in the business they have this thing called the scrum, all right, yeah. which is you're at the end of the line of the red carpet, so it could be that they have time to talk to you, the cele- the, the comics, but, or that they or, just or have they enough just to walk, walk by. by. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, gratefully yeah. enough, yeah. almost everyone stopped, uh, including like uh, Jason Mansukas from Big Mouth, uh, yes. the writer, the cast, the, the writers of Big Mouth with Nick Kroll. <sighs> Uh, Kevin Hart. Kevin remember, Hart. Was remember there. when he yeah. sat next to us for fucking the Roastmaster thing? Roastmaster. Yeah. Oh sat my god, Nick. Steve! I don't know how you didn't fucking um, like erupt. I remember his orange yeah. Hawaiian shirt. I remember looking. at So we had just came back from yeah. seeing Nick Kroll doing his, do his one man show. Yeah. We go to Roastmasters at midnight with Jeff Ross. I look at. I take a double take and I look behind Steve and I'm like, Nick. Kroll, like I whisper, yeah. like Nick Kroll is behind you. So. You should have seen <laughs> the, the slowness. <laughs> Of Steve turning around, that Nick Crow literally was behind it, and like Nick Crow knew we were talking yeah. about him, so he just gives us this like <laughs> no, up face. that that it's thing. So you know, you know, he does like a muffling. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he like gave me like a Nick look, Crow. like a, like you know, like what's up? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Yo. hey, and you're you know, cartoons. and that's not it. Uh, after the sh- after the show, um, Nick Crow like. You know, he he recognizes. We knew he knew we knew he was there. This and that. He's and after the show, he's like, "Hey guys, uh, a quick pick. Yeah, yeah, he's like, come, come take a picture, low key, low key." And he took a little picture with us. But then poor, up. but then poor guy, he yeah, fucking, he, yeah, he, he, he got but he was near the exit. Us. He was, yeah, yeah, he was, he was good. Yeah, we could have blocked for him if you. But that was very nice of him. Uh, so nice many though. nice. Like yeah. Trevor Noah, super nice. Oh yeah, oh yeah, super. Fucking idiot me, fucking idiot me. That I saw his first time in Montreal. Yeah, he's been here before. I'm, like, ah, a, I'm not that big of a fan, but you're a nice guy. <laughs> so going back to the red carpet, on he the has red a carpet, great accent, by the way. Trevor Noah, yeah. yeah <laughs> going back to the red carpet, uh, Alonzo Bowden was on the red carpet, mm. like he always is, and and he because he hosts the JFL Awards, which we've been to as yes. well. And um, and and he yeah, and Steve is filming for my phone, and I'm interviewing Alonzo, and, and Alonzo is talking to me. He was always super generous with his time, and, like he talks for, like you know, for a few yeah. minutes. But hey, he looks at Steve, <laughs> and he's like, "Yo, man, love your sneaks." <laughs> no, yeah. and Steve was wearing those Spike Lee inspired. Oh, the like, orange ones. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the Air Force ones. And you, you melted. Yeah. Oh they're, my God. <laughs> they're from Vegas. I don't know how I didn't <laughs> drop the camera. I was just there, like, oh my God, my <laughs> ego's going everywhere. <laughs> and that night, Steve left with me in the car and started screaming obscenities to people. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, just he got obnoxious a bit. Uh, yeah, sometimes I get obnoxious. <laughs> it doesn't sn- happen often. He gets snobby. It doesn't happen often, though, when you drink. <laughs> so, it's yeah. not like a surefire thing that's going to happen. You know? <laughs> and uh, like I mentioned before, Alonzo is uh, is part of the judge panel for the Eat My Shorts uh, short film festival on, at the JFL Virtual Festival. I feel like that's the same thing. <laughs> Saying go fuck yourself. Like, eat my <laughs> shorts. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's clever. Eat My Shorts is short films. Oh yeah, fucking idiot, idiot. Oh. And that's uh, and that's uh, October 9th at uh, nine p.m. on the <laughs> virtual platform. Lonzo body. And you know what the thing is that's cool about this year the festival is like like I said it's free, hundred yeah. percent free. But every um, every like um, I guess you call it show or whatever mm-hmm. that you're watching that night, uh, you can make a donation to the charity of the. You know the show's choice. Okay. So like for example, like the Eat My Shorts uh, uh, film festival is like uh, they're spotlighting the True North Aid, for example. And like I, you can I, go and like make a I, donation. I don't know why I thought it was gonna be like one of those ones, like short the shortless. Oh, short. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> or I think like Steve Burns' um, Breaking In panel is like doing yeah. uh, Comedy Gives Back, which is super big, like in nice. North America for comedy and comedians in the. So that's super awesome. I mean, going back to some of those festival stories that we have, Steve and I have a really good one, <laughs> where we also we attended Bumping Mics oh, with yeah. Jeff Ross oh, and David yeah, Tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is on another midnight show because Jeff Ross is like the fucking king of like midnight shows, right? Yeah. We go to uh, the venue. We're waiting in line to get in. It's general admission, and 
everyone's on their fucking phone, okay? And this is where I realized, holy shit, people don't realize what's happening outside of their phone. They don't even see it happening in front no. of them. So this is what happened. I'm on my phone. I happen to look up for a second. I see this man, leather coat, super tall, hair like slick back, like wavy, with a few other people, like maybe like three or four people. It's fucking Jim Carrey. <laughs> and I'm like, I hit Steve. I'm like, dude, like no one even noticed. And Steve sees. I'm like, he's like, what the fuck? He's no, next to you. Yeah. No one. No, he's he like walked by us. Okay. Going to the show that we're going to. Okay. But nobody noticed. Nobody's except freaking Steve out and that, I. that he's going to be in there. Yes. So what do I do? They start letting us in right after they let Jim in. Okay. All right. And and I see where he's going. He's going to the balcony. Yeah. So I'm so they didn't really like tell us. Oh, you have to sit here. They yeah. were just like, oh, take a seat. You know, yeah. me. I'm like balcony. Steve. We're going upstairs. So we go up. You see that there's security. Yeah. Okay. So we're yeah. like, okay, we're, we're gonna respect that, obviously. So what do we do? There's so there's three tables at the front of the balcony. Yeah. Jim carries on one. There's an empty one, and then there's where Steve and I decide to sit. So you you have like a buffer table. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We watched that entire show, sitting next to Jim Carrey, seeing him laugh and whatever. But then, during the oh. show, there were so many special guests at that show. There was Judd Apatow. Oh. There was Michael Che. Yeah. Uh, uh, Michael Che sat next to us in a hoodie, by the way, at some point. He did, yeah. and we took a yeah. picture with us, yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, at, the, at the bar. The bar. Yeah. But at the show, there were so many people. And, and then uh, Jeff Ross found out that Jim Carrey was in the audience, and he oh. called him out. Oh. And Jim, like, doesn't like that shit. Oh. Okay, like he's like super like uh, that's why I, I the whole night Steve and I didn't even go up to him. We were yeah. just so yeah. honored to just be. I think I have a picture of he's like, a legend. The, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I had like a picture of his profile or yeah, something, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like uh, just to be like I sat next to him, yeah. you know. Uh, but but like Steve, you could do it the best. Uh, so so Jeff Ross, so, and, uh, oh, I heard Jim Carrey's in the crowd, you know, yeah, so and you could see Jim Carrey. So Jim's like, like, I was like yeah, he's like, <laughs> she's shuffling around there. And he's like, uh, well, let's see, let's see if we could do it. He's like, Let, let's see if we could get Jim on stage. He's like, Jim, you, you want to come down? Uh, you know, come on, come on. Then Jim Carrey, there's like a, a spotlight, oh, okay? On him. No, 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 no it's, like it's below. Below, but he takes it up, so he points, it, he points the spotlight to his face, and in, in pure Jim Carrey style, he's like, not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's that exact way you know he'll say it, and that face you know he'll pull when he does and it. And for me, I was like, uh, I'm good. <laughs> I was, died. You I could have died. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it just. It was, really. He was the king of of comedies when we were growing up. Oh, oh yeah. dude, and it's like I, it's such a he's so so fucking tall. Yeah. Dude. Like holy shit, and and I'm there, and I'm like, and then after because Jim's there, and you know who my comedy hero is, right? It's Judd Apatow, right? He Judd comes up, sits in that fucking table with fucking. I'm just like I can't. Yeah. You know how many times I've crossed paths with Judd Apatow at the festival? I can never do anything. I'm just like you should say yeah. hi. Yeah, next time I have no choice but to do it. Look, I said hi to Chris Lee. It was fucking... Uh, dude, I oh, yelled his yeah, name. You want, you want to do that story? I I, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I was so fucked up in the middle of that street. <laughs> so what happened? Uh, we were waiting to go to his show. We had gone to one show. We bumped into Dom, who wrote yeah, we were the, having theme, a beer or something. the theme of uh, <laughs> a Dom the Carbone. Podcast, Dom Carbone. <laughs> Shout out. Shout out to Dom Carbone, who was at, uh, was at the terrace. And... Uh, there was him and there was this boy. There was, there was Mike and I think Larry were, were there too. The whole, the whole Housefly hum crew, yeah, I think, were, I think we were out. Yeah. And um, I just, I'm just looking around. I'm like in a daze. We had, we had just smoked. We had a couple we of drinking, beers. Yeah. I'm walking around. I'm like, I'm just looking around in a daze. And I'm talking to Dom and I'm like, dude, I can't wait for the Chris D'Elia show. It's going to be so funny. I turn around and as I turn around, Dom, I see Dom like on his phone doing something. Exactly what you said. Yeah, people are not paying attention. People are not paying attention. Yeah. I turn around and I see him walking and he is big. Yeah. Like, big like his he's muscular. His chest is like me fucking horizontal. <laughs> like he's so <laughs> he's so fucking just like like massive. And I'm like, obviously like a fucking idiot. <gasps> oh my fucking god, Crystal Leo, what's up? And I like no, and him. you were loud, no. and I was loud. Like I no, yelled. No, it. you were you were like, uh, oh, <laughs> what's up, what's up, Chris? Oh, like the street, <laughs> the street. Like he's like, walking in the street. This is yeah. like a pedestrian he, only street. He was like yeah. really in the zone. Like yeah, he looked yeah. very focused. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. he's on his way to make us laugh. Yeah, yeah. we were seeing him in like and, fifteen minutes. And fucking Cafone over here, <laughs> fucking idiot, says that. And when he fucking. 
fist bumped me. It was he intense. like he like it was like as if I was fucking. It was Mike Tyson's right testicle. It just fucking just. <laughs> You know, I was uh, like, ah, oh, like I I'm, remember telling you after that moment, I'm like, you should not have done that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I don't know. I was on that thing. Yeah, I know. It's exciting because you yeah. see people like, like for example, remember when I wanted yeah. to steal the Netflix? Well, he, he was. Oh, all- yeah. <laughs> 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 what the fuck? I came up with a whole fucking heist movie way to get that yeah, pillow I, into I the remember, elevator. I, yeah, <laughs> Steve, go talk to the security guard. Yeah. But after the security guard, when that guy there turns was around, way too many security. Though. Steve, like there was we always have those all- fucking done it no because there was always one more security guard no, and we, i would already been distracting we, one we could have done it i no you don't understand i was i was i have played i was i was playing hitman. these out i have played <laughs> enough hitman in my life to know the layout of that room now you know my heart yeah. no but since some of the elevators had security now it doesn't matter uh, yeah when you have that netflix pillow i'm walking out walk out like you own it steve I take his pots, put her on my neck. That works I'm for bringing the, this to Darla that downstairs. That works for the, the waiters and the, the the catering staff, the barmaids. That works for that, not for the security. I work not for, for catering. Not for elevator security. I need more bechamel. Can you let me in this fucking elevator? I'm putting it in this pillow. Oh, my God, guys. And the food. Yeah, the food's <laughs> the great. The food's great. Yeah. The drinks are greater. Yeah. And yeah. we got we got fucking. Remember when I was part of that bucket list for the sorority girl? Oh yes. Oh fuck yeah. Bucket fuck. list, whatever that heist. Yeah, yeah, R- yeah. Reg, Reg, our good friend. <laughs> I guess you're not, not Saint He he was uh, he was hanging out with us, and uh, and this girl. Well, you, I mean, this girl. Uh, Nobody I, knew. A total stranger. Total stranger comes up to Tom and is like, "Hey, uh, do you mind if I kiss your 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 bald head or whatever?" Right. I didn't know. I thought it was cold for something. And then, <laughs> and then I have a girlfriend. I don't and know then, what you're talking about. And then about. Tom's like. Sure, <laughs> but then without asking, and she's like, "Why? Why? Why?" He's like, "Well, it was part of a dare. What was it? Like a yeah, dare? Yeah, yeah. Like a, like she had like a list of things to do that night. Yeah, yeah and she was from California. Or yeah, something. it was her uh, and her friends all had the yeah. things that. Did, yeah. yeah, weird things happen at JFL, but they're fun and they're memorable. <laughs> okay. Just like how every time Steve and I go to a party and Russell Peters is there, he always <laughs> says hi to us. <laughs> For real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I I have personally, uh, you know, never <laughs> never interviewed Russell, and I think it, he would be great to interview because he's a he's a super nice guy. He's super yes, down to earth yes. considering the amount of money that he has. Um, but uh, he always says hello to us as if like it's, which is like, I guess a courtesy because it's it's almost like oh. I might know these people. Let me say hello to them. You know what I mean? And Steve's just there like, yeah. <laughs> I remember passing by Ken Jong and he was super fucked up. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He was super fucked up. Yeah, yeah. There was a whole like <laughs> blocked was... off area. Ken Jong, like Kevin Hart was going there afterwards. Like I looked at like a Kevin Hart like story and we were playing like Jenga after yeah, or something. We were in the same oh, room my... as Kevin Hart. Yeah, well, we interviewed him. Like, how yeah. Can I, yeah. What a very humble like, guy. It was one very, question, but it, like, yeah. you, dude, the guy like looked up at me and was like, you have a question for me? Like, yeah. You know, and I did it. It wasn't my best question, but like, it no, was a good but, question. You know. Like, in that moment, that moment of like, he's the last person on the red carpet, you have to, and he's the, the biggest star in the fucking world. Like, you know, you have to just be, you're getting a generation award. What's the first joke you remember telling? That's what I said. And he answered. He laughed and he answered. He said, "Don't ever, don't repeat this." But because I don't know what he said, it was something about a garbage man or something, the the bit. And like he, he was like, "Thank you," you know. Whatever. I'm like, "Well, no, thank you." <laughs> like, <laughs> Dave yeah. Chappelle's massive. Kevin Hart, very short. Yeah, just so you know. <laughs> but super nice guy. <laughs> you, they should do a thing, a skit together where Kevin Hart is riding on <laughs> Dave Chappelle's body, like Austin Powers but reversed. <laughs> oh my god. But it's a fun festival, and I've, I've you know, oh, yeah. oddly enough, not oddly enough, I mean, gratefully enough, I had an opportunity to interview great people, and Howie Mandel is also one of them, who's oh. a part owner of the festival. Yeah. Like, uh, like I mentioned earlier, Charlene, she gave me the opportunity to interview Howie Mandel in person for like 12 minutes. I had 12 minutes from the moment I stepped that, in the door. That's crazy. That's someone else we all like grew up. From like, when you stepped yeah, in, the door, you know? in the room. Yeah, this is before I set up, the, I had to set up in anything. Like, I, I, had my, I, brought my, I brought my sister to film, I had my mic attached to the phone. I like had to make sure everything was working. So let's say I had like ten minutes with Ali Mandel, all right? Super down to earth, super nice. Obviously, you can't touch him. Just yeah. the fist bump, and uh, and but oh, like God. super nice. The guy answered all my questions. Like I talked about his career, like how he started and everything. Like just th- these guys, they don't owe us anything. Like no. you know, like yeah. and and it's the ones I I've never met someone who was a dick at the festival. I you know, but the ones that we've spoken to and had the honor to speak to, like. They're great people, you know. I'm, it's a great festival. I'm kind of pissed. I didn't say hi to Andrew Santino. Yeah, he was walking around. All, I think I, yeah. I, I, I like pissed next to him in the bathroom. Yeah. Or something. He's like the he's like the nicest 
He seems yeah. like the nicest guy. Yeah, and hopefully one day yeah. we can uh, record our podcast at JFL. Oh, that would yeah, be that would With be like great. a special guest of like whoever's, you know. Oh my God. Whoever, whoever we grab from the bar. Yeah. We'll take, we'll take anybody. Dave Chappelle. <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld. Dave um, Rahesh. Something awesome I saw at the at the JFL, and this was last year. Uh, uh, everybody, uh, you know, knows, knows Pete Holmes. You know, oh, he's yeah. uh, very yeah. known as a you know good guy, comedian, whatever, very clean. Christian dude. Yeah. Yeah. But okay, we, this we saw it first at um, Roastmasters. that Roastmasters. Uh, Jeff Ross was hosting. Okay, so he was one of the judges, and that night, he, oh Pete Holmes, it, yeah, wow, I fucking he, couldn't place him. Fart. Yeah, and that night he he declared himself to be Mean Pete, and he was ripping everybody, but like destroying. He was destroying his fellow judges. He was destroying the contestants. Oh he was going God. after the crowd. He was <laughs> fucking killing everybody. And then the, the next day, he continued at the, the oh award ceremony. Jim, oh, yeah. yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah he was yeah, still yeah. mean. Pete. Jimmy Carr kills it, though, for uh, that. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy Carr is someone who's very intimidating. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've, I've interviewed him once. Very nice. He's tall too, and he's tall, and he's always dressed very dapper. Yeah. Yes, he's always in a suit. Uh, but a very intimidating, dude. Uh, just because you know he's like has that face. He's very intense. Like can he's you, British. Can you do us the laugh? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> I just remembered that that's like such a JFL thing. Yeah, if you're, because, you're in a show with uh, <laughs> Jimmy yeah, Carr. There's been you know. shows we've been to. Uh, and Jimmy Carr's in the audience, and you just hear the laugh, and you're like, "Oh, well, <laughs> Jimmy's, here. Jimmy's here," you know. <laughs> but it's um, really hoping everything you know goes well for next year, and hopefully we can have a festival back. It would be great. I miss it. I miss. Oh I, I miss God. the whole atmosphere. I miss the city being alive with comics, and I miss those fucking drinks and that food. Those dr- I miss seeing oh, like yeah. four shows a night. You know, oh, like yeah, you, yeah. You, you you plan out your night. You're like, okay, I'm starting at seven, then like at nine, there was a then time, at ten thirty, then at midnight. There was know? a day that we got there at one o'clock. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, yeah, got yeah, there at like one a, o'clock. Yeah, we we'll go see the live podcast yeah. and stuff. Yeah, we had gotten there at one o'clock, and we got home. It was like three. Yeah, that was probably after a party. It was a fucking <laughs> long day. I don't know how people in the industry do that for two yeah. straight weeks. Yeah, Emil like uh, uh, has has told <laughs> Emil worked with them for a while. He told me that he it was during the actual ten days of the festival. Like it's two weeks, but like the two, the ten days of the English festival, he like doesn't sleep. He sleeps a total of like five hours for two weeks. No. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes he has to just like in a chair. Just he he told me he saw Louis C.K. when he did a pop up show here, and he fell asleep in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> like he was like beyond like he had like zero. I remember up. that last night when he when he was done. <laughs> he started, oh yeah. He started but, party. Yeah. <laughs> but it was cool because because uh, Emil is now. Considered an artist because he's performed with Eddie King at at the festival, uh, so so it was cool to have him there, not as a worker but as an artist. Yeah, you know, and he's just chilling with us. And like, uh, anyways, it's a great time. Yeah. I miss it. I hope you know. I miss that. Oh, absolutely. I love the festival, and I, and I thank you to Charlene and Liana for hooking yeah. hooking us up with these interviews. It's so oh, great. Huge real, thanks. Real talk, though, I'm not that big of a fan of comedy. Get the <laughs> fuck out. of here. You can leave the podcast whenever you want. I'll find another producer. Um. Also, uh, I don't mean that, by the way. Call your buddy Wow. Wow. Hi. Oh, is, is, this, is this the guy from my cousin Vinny? Wow. <laughs> um, also, uh, you know, zero value, but I want to say it anyway because it's kind of funny. If you notice a lot, uh, Craig Robinson, and a lot of movies he's in and shows and stuff, oh. he always has a towel on him. He does that. Do that in real life. Yeah, I saw him. That. Yeah, during the festival, I saw him. Well, the yeah, we were leaving uh, Roastmasters. Uh, he was just like walking what around downtown, and he had that fucking. T- he's also super fucking tall too. Yeah, he's really. I big. thought he was like a little. All shortish. these guys are like fucking. Six yeah, he's five, massive, six, and he and he has the fucking towel in real life. Uh, Craig Robinson. Oh Shit. yeah, guys. Uh, I mean, I could talk about this festival. All fucking oh, day. yeah, me too. I could, we could do a podcast just on like the on festival. JFL. We you should know? probably start a podcast. Probably, yeah. probably yeah. start a podcast. It's probably be worth something. Yeah. yeah. Also, shout out to Bruce Hills, who uh, was also a friend and, uh, and uh, for doing this, for keeping the festival going this year. Yeah. Um, he like, could have easily just thrown the towel, but like he's like, fuck it. He goes, we need to get our can, people on. Can we fucking, you know? can we have a fucking cure? So next year we can go to JFL. Yeah, I need to go to JFL next year, by the way, Universe. Yeah. So as yeah. long as Universe is hearing us. Yeah. JFL has to happen. 
Oh, I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't care if I don't go on vacation. I need to go to JFL. I yeah. need that. And I need, can I have a 21 race fucking season for Formula One, please? Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. I think it's that I time of the week. <laughs> I think it's that time of the week right now, ladies and gentlemen, that your favorite time and my favorite time, here it is. The Hype Man's Ethnic Song of the Week. Uh, isn't it like a JFL edition? Um, is there laughing involved? No. Wow. But... Um, you know, we're going to somewhere sunny, like uh, sunny that's kind of Puerto Rico. Oh, well, Mexico, oh. but oh, uh, uh, the same far. vibe, same vibe. Um, you know, sun makes people happy, which leads to laughter. So. <laughs> okay, there you go. Not in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going. Like I said, we're going to Mexico this uh, this episode with uh, classic. Mexican, this is like one of their top acts to come out of there, in my opinion, and many others. Mana, oye mi amor. Wow. That sounds like a lot, a lot of the police. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, they're uh, they're kind of like known to be like the Mexican the police. That song, the Mexican police, SOS to the cartel. Oh my god! Uh, uh, great song. So, so again, the title and the and the uh, name of the song. Oye, uh, I mean, the title and the artist. Oye mi amor by Mana. What, what's it about? Yeah, uh, it's um, it's kind of about the usual stuff. Uh, this guy's like. <laughs> Drug lord. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, obsessed with some uh, some girl, and he's like, oh, we would be good together, and you don't know how much I love you, and this and that. But then he's like, oh, but you're with someone, and he's cold and boring. <laughs> <laughs> so he's giving him shade. Yeah, yeah, he's like, it's oh, cold and boring, fuck? but they're in Mexico, go figure. Uh-huh. He's dark and about his heart. <laughs> <laughs> Great song. It's probably one of my favorites that you've had on here. Oh, I'm glad uh, you liked I it. I still like Google Sekulich better. Well, uh, er, I think everyone likes Goku Sakovich better. Less. I know I do. <laughs> but who cares what we think? What do you think? Hit us up at snobcast behind at gmail.com. That's snobcastpod at gmail.com. Hey! Yeah! You know, you know what I think we should do for like next episode or an upcoming episode? I think I should do like like my game my game show voice. Oh, oh. Don't, but yeah, but don't, don't give it away right now. Oh, no, I'm not going to give it away oh. right now. You want to do like a game show episode? Oh, we could we could, we could figure we, that we out. Could finesse something. We, we could, could yeah. finesse something. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. We'll figure it With out. some uh, pop culture trivia or like uh, trivia about us or something. Yeah. Yeah. I want to have popcorn again on the podcast. <laughs> okay, that's okay. We could. Yeah. Last week was nice because I was chewing. Yeah, well, it was very nice. Mm-hmm. Um, before we give, our, we give our closing remarks, I'd like to remind people that the uh, Just for Laughs Festival is uh, going on uh, this weekend, October 9th and 10th at hahaha.com. Um, you can see a bunch of different um, virtual uh, per- performances from stand-up to uh, in-depth interviews. Uh, Kevin Hart, Judd Apatow, uh, Steve Burns, Cedric the Entertainer, Alonzo Bowden. Uh, I don't even know who, who, like, who else is on this. It's Br- everybody. Brimming with talent. Just brimming with talent at hahaha.com this weekend. It starts at, um, at 5 p.m., I believe, October 9th and 10th, and it's completely free. Completely free, and you can definitely do that because we got nothing else to do. At checkout, use promo code SNOB, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and we get a dollar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so definitely do that this weekend, just for last festival. Hey, oh, closing remarks, everybody. No, I thought we were done. No. <laughs> um, 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 I don't know. Uh, don't don't catch a cactus. Okay, that's good. That's, that's actually thumb. that's actually pretty good. Mm. Don't catch a cactus. Yeah, like I regret my heroic moment. Don't catch a cactus. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds like you had a bad experience with a MILF. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Don't catch a cactus. <laughs> Chef Tom? Um Thanks for those uh, I, apple donuts. Oh no problem. Yeah. Actually, uh just in that leaving, I read today somewhere that the, the Evan Mendes wants to get a hitch two going. I don't know how that's gonna work, but mm. Uh, she hasn't acted in anything in a long time. No, because so. she's married to Ryan Gosling. I mean, who? Yeah, I mean, she's just a stay at home mom. She I can guess. just chill with the kids and like live life. They could all. They literally don't need to work anymore. That's a good point. But we do. That's would why. you like to see a hitch too? 
Hit us up. Snobcastpod at gmail.com. Personally, at I would. Snobcast. Will Smith is able to step into any role at 100%. I, I won't disagree, but do I want to see Hitch 2? No. I want to see Hitch 1, actually. It'll be picked up by Netflix or something. It's I'll already on uh, Netflix. No, Hitch 2. Oh. <laughs> do it, Netflix, please. And send us pillows. <laughs> We really like the Netflix pillows uh, you provided to. Uh, yeah. My JFL. closing remark um, is that uh, Steve Byrne wants to have Jameson with us and uh, sing Oasis at a karaoke bar. So uh, this pandemic needs to be over at some point. So Ve- Steve can come back soon. to town yeah. and uh, we can drink Jameson together and enjoy some Oasis. Guys, uh, it's been a pleasure. What's the story, morning glory? <laughs> now we got demonetized. <laughs> and with that. This has been this week's episode of Snobcast. We will see you all next time. (laughs) 